Hi, my name is Wayne Allen Root. I was the Libertarian Vice Presidential nominee in 2008. I'm a Fox News regular guest, and uh, you've probably heard me on radio stations all across the United States. I make literally over a thousand appearances a year on radio from coast to coast, conservative talk radio, giving my opinions and commentaries that are often called the Root Rant. And I've got a Root Rant for you today. I am proud to say that I am the 1%. You know that vilified 1% that the Occupy movement talks about all the time, the 1% of the top earners, like they're terrible people? I am the 1%, and I believe the 1% are the heroes of American business, the heroes of capitalism, the heroes of this economy and this country. And instead of being targeted and demonized and vilified and hunted and punished, I believe we should be celebrated and rewarded for our heroism, our risk-taking, our hard work, our long hours, grueling businesses with so much financial risk that create 70% of all the new jobs in this country. That's what small business men and women create. And that's who the 1% is. See, the media has lied to you. It's a bait and switch job. They want to show you examples of $100 million hedge fund, uh, hedge fund owners, of investment bankers, of those mean, terrible bank CEOs who make $50 million a year and another $100 million in stock options. They want to introduce you to Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and Donald Trump and Senator John Kerry and Arianna Huffington, all of them either billionaires or close to being billionaires. And they want to convince you that that's the 1%, but it's not. Those are the teeny, teeny, teeny tip of the top of the 1%, but the reality is 99% of the 1% that Occupy Movement talks about are small business owners like me, entrepreneurs who risk our own money, work long hours, and create jobs. That's who the real 1% is. Now, when you talk about Bill Gates, you know, that's a spoiled brat Lucky Sperm Club member. That's not the 1%. The day Bill Gates was born, were you aware that his grandfather was the founder and owner of the biggest bank in the Pacific Northwest? How about Donald Trump? <clears throat> Are you aware the day he was born, his father was already the equivalent today of a billionaire, the biggest landlord in the entire New York area? In Brooklyn, Bronx, and Queens, he owned the most apartment buildings of anyone? Are you aware that Warren Buffett's father was a well-connected congressman? Are you aware that Arianna Huffington and United States Senator John Kerry didn't get where they were through hard work and long hours and risking their own money? They married into wealth. That's not the 1%, and that's not the narrative that you ought to be hearing about the 1%. Most of them are small business people, and the way we achieved our quote-unquote overnight success is after 25 years of long hours and hard work and uh, financial risk, after 25 years of that, we became successful overnight, because that's when you first heard about us, but it took that kind of a foundation. And I'm just sick of being vilified by Barack Obama and a socialist cabal, and uh, the Nancy Pelosi's, and the John Kerry's, of all people, and uh, you name it, the Democrat and liberal leftist politicians out there who are attacking the 1%. I've spent my entire life working not only 16-hour days, but mornings, nights, weekends, birthdays, anniversaries, you name it. During the World Series, during the Super Bowl, I'm working. I'm writing my political commentaries. I'm appearing in the media. Uh, I'm performing one of my duties running about a dozen businesses that I own in careers that, uh, that are part of my life. And so I don't own a yacht. I don't own a private plane. I'm not worth $100 million. I have no offshore bank accounts. That's the real 1%. Okay, forget about people with yachts and private planes. Most of us are just hardworking small business people making between 250 and 500,000 a year, and that's why it's bait and switch. Because the leftists of this world, the progressives, the liberals, the socialists, the Obamas, want to convince you that the 1% is Warren Buffett, the billionaire, and they want to convince you he doesn't pay enough taxes, and then in response to that, they want to punish millions of small business owners who make between 250 and $500,000 a year. We are the real 1% who creates the jobs, who makes payrolls every week, who fights hard in this economy to make a payroll, often taking out of our own personal bank accounts, who pays other people's health insurance and allows other people, our employees, to live the American dream. Uh, I've never blamed anyone else when my business has failed. I've never asked for a bailout, and I've never gotten a bailout. Neither has any small businessman or woman that I know. I became a self-made millionaire by the age of 30, and I did it by working grueling hours, by being relentless and never accepting the word no, 
No matter how many no's I got, no matter how many times I failed, I was tenacious and I came back, got back on the horse after dusting myself off and bandaging my arm from the vicious fall, and I got back up and I made myself a success. That's the 1%. I earned my money. I earned it through blood, sweat, and tears. I rarely, if ever, watch TV. I work 16 hours a day. And I rarely, if ever, get to enjoy my kids' sporting events or their ballet or their piano recitals. Uh, you know who knows about that? My son Hudson is 11, and he's running the camera, the high-def camera, that's filming this commentary, this root rant right now. And he knows I don't have time. I work from morning to night, and I rarely go to my kids' sporting events. So you know what? I think I've earned that money because I care that much about building a legacy for my children. Not for the government, not for people who have their hand out, not for entitlement addicts and welfare addicts, but for my kids that I love so much, I work my fingers to the bone and I spill my blood, sweat, and tears. And you know what? I live on a beautiful, world-class golf course here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And you know how many times I've played golf in the last 10 years? Zero. Never been on the course once. Don't even belong to the golf club. I watch the other golfers go by and play. I guess all of them have rich parents who left them a lot of money. But I know I've had to work my entire life for everything I've got. No Ariana Huffington. I didn't marry into money. No John Kerry. I didn't marry into the Heinz fortune. My father wasn't a congressman like Warren Buffett. My dad didn't own every apartment building in New York like Donald Trump. And Bill Gates, well, my grandfather wasn't the owner of the biggest bank in the area. So I had to work for every penny and I've still got to work every penny. And I still worry about paying my mortgage every single month. I have no idea if I'll be able to make it six months from now or a year from now. Because when you make 250 to 500 a year and you've got mortgages and four kids like I do ranging in age between three and 19 and your daughter's at Harvard with a gigantic bill and there are so many bills to pay and so many taxes to pay, you're always worried about next month and next year, there is no job security. I have no guaranteed job for life like government employees. I have no pension the day I turn 50 years old, as a matter of fact, to pay all those government employee pensions and all those taxes and all their free health care for life. I will never retire. I will work till the day I die and I will work my fingers to the bone to leave that legacy for my kids. So when my dad came to me as a kid and he said, the way to make it, you got to trust me, son. If you never want to be a butcher like me, and I don't want you to be one, I don't want you to wear this bloody apron and go to work at 3 in the morning uh, buying meat in a freezing icebox and bring it back to your store and breaking your back, well, then you got to study hard. you got to outwork, out-hustle, and outsmart all the other kids, and you got to wind up at an Ivy League university called Columbia University. That was the only one he knew because it was near our home in New York. And I listened to my father, and when other kids were out partying, I wasn't at those parties, I was studying. And I graduated valedictorian in my high school, and I went to Columbia and graduated dean's list at Columbia University. And then when I got out of Columbia, I listened to my father again, because I knew he'd been right about Columbia, and I knew he'd been right about outworking and not staying out past midnight, and not being at those parties, but instead studying while others were out, and not drinking, and not doing drugs. And I listened, and he was right. And so I listened again. He said, now that you're out of college, you want to be an entrepreneur. The American dream is earned by those willing to break their backs and work day and night, but not for other people, for themselves. You want to be your own boss. You want to open your own business. You want to work day and night, save your money, and then use it to open your own business. And then if you work day and night, instead of doing it for someone else, you do it for your family, you build a legacy, you build a fortune, and you become a self-made millionaire. And I listen to my father, and I've worked 16-hour days my whole life. I've never played golf, never done drugs, never been drunk, take care of my family. And I'll tell you what, I risk my own money on business after business after business, and I've made it in this country. Today, I'm a journalist, I'm a commentator, I'm on radio stations all over this country, Fox News, I'm a former vice presidential nominee, I'm a Las Vegas odds maker, the only one in the world who worked so hard and was so successful, I was awarded my own star by the governor of this state. My own granite 180 pound star in the sidewalk of Las Vegas on the Las Vegas Walk of Stars. I'm a spokesman for multiple businesses. I'm an economist and senior economic advisor for a major global financial services company. And as I've said, a former vice presidential nominee. As Don King would say, only in America. What a great country. The sky's the limit. Anything that you can conceive, you can achieve in this country if you're willing to work hard and risk your own money. But my question to you is, 
Does the media tell you stories like this about the 1%? That we came from humble beginnings? That we started with nothing? That we asked for nothing? That we failed and we blamed no one? That when we failed, we didn't ask for bailouts? That we put in 16-hour days? That we work like dogs and like cornered wolverines day and night, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year? That we know no weekends, we know no holidays, we don't know anything about evenings or mornings being time off? that we've sacrificed our whole life, that we're disciplined, that we care this much for our children. Do you hear that from the media? Or do you only hear about Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and Donald Trump and Arianna Huffington? So from now on, what I'd like you to think of is the 1% is small businessmen and women like me who came from nothing and earned our success. Don't be fooled by the media. We don't deserve to be vilified or targeted or demonized or punished we need to be celebrated as the heroes of the business world, and we need to be rewarded. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the real 1%. God bless you.